In this tutorial, we're going to cover how you use the iPad to effectively teach online reading comprehension. That is a key cornerstone in online research and media skills. Your students are turning to the internet every day to find information for their projects. Effective online reading comprehension takes new skills, strategies, and dispositions. This involves questioning, locating, evaluating, synthesizing, and communicating. However, these skills are not in a straight taxonomy. They are very reciprocal in the sense that you hop back and forth between questioning and locating, evaluating, locating, synthesizing, communicating, and questioning, and vice versa all around. And it is your job as a teacher to prepare students to use these multiple source documents in order to effectively complete their research. When teaching questioning skills to elementary students, I like to focus on language that is approachable to them. I look at questioning as thick questions and thin questions. Thick questions are complex and open-ended. Thin questions are short and closed-ended questions. And there are thick and thin questions, whether students are working on just a descriptive piece or if they're working on their argumentative writing. For example, in descriptive writing, thick questions are usually the topic. The, the details provide the thin questions. In argumentative writing, the issues represent the thick questions and the arguments represent the thin questions. What does this mean? Well, for example, take writing a biography of George Washington Carver. The topic might be the topic would be who is George Washington Carver? Detail examples could be such as where was he born? What were some of his accomplishments? When it comes to argumentative writing, the issue might be climate change. An argument could be, is it caused by human activity? Yes, it's caused by human activity. No, it's not caused by human activity. So you need to really model and teach to your students using the iPads, how do you ask thick and thin questions? How do you recognize when a question is thick? How do you recognize when a question is thin? So once you model thick and thin questions, the next step is to provide students with some guided practice. One method to do that using the iPad is to use concept maps or graphic organizers. There are many different apps that you can use to accomplish this, um, such as Explain Everything, Educreations, Show Me, any of the whiteboard apps, or any of the specific mapping apps that are out there. They can even use their Google Drive um, and create a new document or a new drawing or even a new presentation. There are so many options. Remember, it's not the app that it's important. It's the skill that you're teaching. Basically, you as the teacher are the app for learning. So how does it work? Start by having students pick their shapes or their, build their graphic organizer. Who is George Washington Carver? Then, from that thick question, they can develop a th series of thin questions. For example, one might be, where is he from? Another might be, what did he accomplish? And you can continue and follow along this pattern until the students truly develop a graphic organizer or concept maps that will direct them from their thick question down to their theories of 
LinkedIn questions. Teaching your students to locate information on the iPad is very important. These are always connected devices that your students will be using to find multiple online sources. If they do not know how to look for that information or how basic search engines work, they will be ill prepared. It is your job as a teacher to explicitly define the skills, model those skills, provide students guided practice, and then watch them as they use it during independent practice and assess their ability um, and complete the cycle. The first place to start is by teaching them about the keywords that they use. And those keywords should be driven from their thin questions. And you have to teach students about those keywords. You also have to teach them about the search engine. Now, this is a screenshot of search engines. The most effective way to really teach these skills is on the iPad is to use your whiteboard apps and use the screenshots and teach the kids the basic parts of the search engine. For instance, they will need to know things such as The URL bar. This is where they put in the address. They'll need to know that there are search bars built right in and that you can search in the search bar but in the Safari browser you cannot search directly in the URL bar as you do not have a space on the keyboard. They will need to know that you need to take them walk them through the different parts of the search engine. That Google now gives you what is called the one card which provides some very basic results. They will need to know that up here you can get to many different search engines and that you have to really teach them to read these search results step by step. So they'll want to know that here is the title of the website. Okay. You'll need to really pay attention to the reading the search results, I mean the search description. You also want them to focus in on the URL description. I mean the, the actual URL address. So for example, they should know where the .org, the .edu is, and that this is the page extension. Um, another thing to teach the students is that here you will find your related searches. Those related searches will often relate back to their thin questions. And if the students know those techniques, you can improve that. One of the most important things you can teach your elementary school students about online reading comprehension using iPads is effective keyword use. Good online readers know when their keywords are working, they know when they need to revise their keywords, and they know how to revise their keywords. A great way to teach students how to revise keywords is to have them either model or have the students complete an activity where they move from their thick question down to their thin questions. So if you put in just Carver Washington, notice some of the results that you'd get. you get Wikipedia up front, um, biography.com. But then what happens if the kids were to say put in George Washington Carver biography? Notice that the search results are becoming more and more relevant. You're getting notable biographies, some YouTube movies um, in the description. However, for elementary school students, reading Wikipedia is not going to be an option. They need to know how to revise keywords to best fit their needs. One thing that we always teach elementary school students is to include specific keywords. Just by changing your keyword searches to George Washington Carver for Kids, notice that they're getting social studies for kids, um, students are getting a YouTube movies that other kids have made under two minutes, they're, and so this will really help them focus their ideas. Finally, they can take it one last step further 
and revise the keywords to George Washington Carver Biography for Kids. And that will get them probably the best results out of those. Now they're getting the notable biographies, the Garden of Praise, um, and different activities. And the kids will have to look through. And once they have those keywords, then you can start talking about what are the best sources. And that moves us on to evaluation. Another thing you can teach as a teacher on the iPad is how students can select search results by reading level. If you click on the little wrench for the settings, you will be taken to different options. Students can then choose to either do it by time or by results. The time is nice if you're looking at different current events. The results section is nice for them if they want to select by reading level. After they click on search results, they can then choose reading level. Next, it will display for students basic, intermediate, and advanced. If students click on the basic, they will then reorganize the results, giving them based on reading level. Now, reading level, it's um, not perfect searching for the we on websites, but it does help them hone down the results to more manageable um, search results that they might be able to use for their projects. The next thing you have to teach your elementary school students who are using iPads for internet research is how to evaluate sources. Now, this is a very complicated skill, and it is something that students will need to be taught from their earliest ages on through graduate school. Um, when we focus in on the teaching of the evaluation of sources, we talk about two things. Credibility and relevancy. However, after working with students in elementary schools for so long, we find that that language is just not developmentally appropriate. We prefer to use words such as truthful and useful. Using this kind of language with your students as you evaluate sources will help them understand whether or not this is a website that they can do. How do you basically do this? Well, I would focus in on different think alouds. Something that you can try doing is think alouds with hoax websites where you could talk about, wait a minute, could this be true? You could also look at for markers of usefulness. during different think alouds. And together, what you're basically doing is trying to model the skills of identifying websites that are useful and truthful. For elementary school students, truthful, useful websites might just be come down to, can I actually read this information? Truthful websites could be by looking at the publisher criteria. Is this from another school? Is this from a known publisher? Um, and you can start to build in those skills, and over time, they will become more skilled at evaluating information. The next thing you need to focus on teaching students is how to synthesize information. This is very difficult. Students need to know how to take information from source A, take information from source B, combine it with C, which could be either their prior knowledge or opinions, and take those three things together take those three things together and format a new idea. And that is very tricky for students to understand. Often, in the videos that I have seen, students look for just finding the one source with all their information, or they end up just using information from the last source they find. So, what is something that you can do? Well, there are some great apps to help students take notes. 
the um, iPad comes with a note-taking tool called Notes, but, however, one of my favorites is an app called Side by Side. Here, with Side by Side, students can actually open up multiple sources. As you can see, the website addresses are different. Then, they can have a note-taking thing on the side. They can share those notes via email with the teacher or with the students within their groups. This allows students to look at multiple sources and multitask and take notes at the same time. It is a great tool for students to use. Students could also return to their original graphic organizer, their concept map, and begin to fill it in with your notes. You can have the students do this in Google Drive and share it with you that way, or you can have them upload it to Dropbox and share it that way. They could also do it, finish it in Edu Creations or Show Me and send you that file. The last step in the recursive process of online reading comprehension is to have students communicate the information they have. And there are so many ways to do that on the iPad, it is hard to list that here. The point is that students understand that they understand their purpose. their audience, and their task. And these three choices will influence what kind of app they use to communicate the information. You, as a teacher, also have to design the task for students. So what you determine with these also will determine how they get the information to you. The important thing to think about is you want to be able to assess that information so you could have them either upload it to Google Drive, Dropbox, or share their presentation with you at any point. If you have any questions, feel free to drop me an email, find me on Twitter, and or just send up a discussion board post.